Father, we thank you. We thank you for your son, the precious gift, Lord, that we still have no idea what we have inherited. So, Lord, we thank you, yes. and we praise you, and we ask that you would open our ears and our hearts to receive the messages that you prepared on this night. Father, we ask that the blood just cover all of us, and, Father, that we never forget Gethsemane. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. My word tonight is coming from John 19, yes. 25 through 27. <clears throat> Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home, and she lived there the rest of her life. Yes. Like too many mothers lately, uh -huh. Mary finds herself standing at the foot of a crime scene. Her son has gotten caught up in a political machine. He's fallen into the hands of corrupt law enforcement, and he is now in the process of becoming another victim of what can only be called a state-sanctioned murder. I'm sure she's standing there wondering, why is my son the one that's hanging on this cross? We know that this crime did not happen today. We know that this crime started with Adam in the Garden of Eden. And we know that the crime will continue unabated until Jesus returns. Jesus is going to return for all the cold cases. He's going to return for all the open cases. And he's going to return to close all the cases. Now there's something else that's a little strange about this particular crime scene. Because the victim is the one making the identification. As he's hanging there on the cross, I'm sure he's paying close attention to his mother's anguish. I'm sure she's startled when she hears him speak because she's so caught up in the injustice of what's going on. He looks at her and he says, mother, woman, this is your son now. And he says to the disciple, this is your mother. In other words, I'm changing your DNA. You are now his and he is now yours. There is no distinction between you and her or me. We are all one now because I have said what I have said. Now those of you that are in law enforcement, and I know we have a whole room full, understand that blood transfer is a way of proving who was there. Now there's blood spatter and there's blood transfer. Well, right now we are talking about transfer. What's the difference? In order for there to be transfer, you had to have been there. You had to have touched the person. You had to have been at the crime scene. And not only that, you had to pick up some evidence and you had to transfer it to whoever else was around. Now, What's the difference? Blood spatter, well that could happen to anybody. You could be walking past the crime scene and blood can spatter on you. In order for you to be considered part of the transfer, there had to be a connection made. So as Jesus is on the cross, he has changed their DNA. He has taken his blood and it is now transferred 
unto them. Now this is not like Passover. Let's think about it, because tonight is Passover. See, that is the blood of a lamb, and it was covering all that were there. It's not like the scapegoat, because that was just a symbol, right? The sin was put on the goat, and the goat ran off somewhere. But we know that Jesus did not go anywhere. He stayed on the cross. And we know that his blood came down. And we know that if you were not there, you could not touch it. So as they stood there, as that transfer took place, as they became one with Christ and one with another, we know that nothing could make a difference in that particular instance. Nothing could change what Jesus Christ had done. We are also part of that same DNA. When we decided that we wanted to be covered in the blood of Jesus, our DNA changed right then and there. And nothing can make it go back to the way that it was before. No one can do it for you. There is no scapegoat. There is no Passover. Right now, the only thing left for us to do is to touch and transfer. Amen. So I want to know, as we are sitting here quietly in our seats, is there any evidence that we are covered in the blood of Jesus? See, we don't have any forensic to come here and swab us and check. The only way for people to know that we have been changed is that we have to offer the evidence up. Amen. You see, most crimes are committed by people who don't want people to know they did it. But we should be glad to let people know that we are covered in the blood, that we want to pass the evidence on, and we want to create more disciples just like us. So as I said before, as I return to my seat, is there any evidence? Is there splatter or is there transfer? Praise God.